Hello. Willie. Good afternoon, Daily Axe. <laughs> hey, Mark, can you tell Aaron I'll just pick up shortly? I'm doing that Skype interview. Today we're talking with Tracy Heckman, director of Daily Axe. He's involved in all kinds of good, good permaculture work. Pleased to have him back. This is the fourth time I've actually talked to Trayson. Trayson is also a mentor of mine. And we're looking for him to uh, get his tech support ready. I think I'm good. You, you got me, Willie? Yeah, turn up your volume a little bit if you could. Okay, let me see. I got it all the way up on the screen. I'll... Uh... Maybe I'll just speak closer to the computer. Is that better? Is that better? Yep, that's good. All right. Well, I have some good news to share. I just finished my PDC with uh, Bayouk and Cody. Awesome. Congratulations, man. I'm really I'm pleased because I came through a, an interesting uh, process of in, in, you know, inspection and questioning and prophesizing, and, and now I'm uh, actually started a permaculture guild for San Mateo County down here. Nice, that's great to hear. So I'm uh, I'm activating. Good to get inspired and activated. <laughs> so, what's news from you? What's what's uh, the most important thing you're working on today? God, that is a good question. Um, <laughs> working on a quiver of good things. One, you know, always at the core of the nature reconnection. I just got back from a week backpacking in the high Sierras and uh, enjoying the the confluence of snow snow fed rivers, which has been really nice. And then uh, in about a half an hour, shortly after we get off the phone, I'm going to be going by Pocket Park, which is a model permaculture food forest that that we did in partnership with the city of Katadi. We have a free work day there this Saturday with an expert permaculture designer, Patrick Picard of Equinox Landscape. And so that's an incredible landscape. And then shortly after that, we're going to meet with uh, Paul Piazza from the town of Windsor, who um, is doing, we've done some incredible work up in, in Windsor. We just did one of our many gray water workshops teaching how to install a laundry to landscape system. And so we're going to have some discussions about transforming some public park space and uh, possibly doing some, some further food and fruit tree planting. So as far as just a, and of course there's always a gaggle of other grand things, but you know, those two civic projects are, are what's actually on the schedule today. Wow. Trayton Heckman, I, I couldn't imagine being you today. That's huge. <laughs> things, things are That's abundant. Great. High flow. <laughs> <laughs> Trayton, tell me how you see... Um, the process of building out the infrastructure and the camaraderie and the education from your neck of the woods out towards other uh, other parts of the region, say. How does that work? How do you unlocalize it in a way? I will do my best to answer that question. As always, you uh, you ask some, some, some big and interesting questions. You. So, I, you know, I think if I understand it, at, at the core of it is – you know, replicable models and sharing best practices with each other. And so us in Sonoma County, Deliax, and our partners, just like people all over the U.S. and all over the world, small groups of engaged citizens and leaders who are um, creating these sort of models rooted in care of the earth, care of people, share the surplus, permaculture ethics and design principles. And you're just really sharing with each other and getting super inspired and taking action and all of us just doing the best we can to do what we're doing really well and then connect with others who are doing important work. Um, you know, collectively we learn from seeing other successes and other people evolving and innovating. And so for Daily Acts, we're just doing our best both at the home scale front to create these models from backyard food forests to gray water systems to working on gray water policy and then doing larger scale civic actions like the 350 Home and Garden Challenge that we've helped lead um, in which we had over 1,100 actions in a single weekend in Sonoma County this year. And then through Transition U.S., this incredible network with over 90 Transition Town initiatives across the U.S., 
you know, trying to spread activities like that and, and learn from other people and share what we're doing. I mean, that's, you know, I, I think what we're going for. And again, for us, really, the, the civic engagement has been a part that we felt to be really important. Uh, right, right. What, um, what resources are you uh, needing more of uh, as, you, as you do your work? What do you need? You know, there's, there's the perpetual part of it, sort of a human story about lack and not enough. And what that often comes down to is feeling we don't have enough resources, we don't have enough time, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough skill, all those sort of things. And so acknowledging that, of course, we could use more time, money, skill, engaged people, but really shifting our lens from a lack of resources to the resourcefulness and the relationships of just working magic with who and what we have. Um, and, and using that, just like these permaculture gardens, to actually more effectively and efficiently um, utilize the resources that are available and then create these thriving environments that actually sequester and draw in more of the nutrients and relationships we need. Um, so, you know, so, so one, working on that lens. But, yeah, of course, like I said, time, money, materials, that kind of thing is, is always helpful to really spread these models so we could do more of this work. Mm. I hear you, man. I'm. Um, it, seem, it seems like I'm always asking my teachers, <clears throat> colleagues, how permaculture can help in disasters, um, maybe post-war condition. Do you have any insight into into those sort of acute situations and how that can be addressed by uh, Daily Acts or other groups? I'm definitely not an expert on the realm, though I did help teach part of a a permaculture first responder class years ago, which is a combination of a permaculture design course curriculum and wilderness first responder aspect. Um, and, you know, the, it definitely can be applied in emergency situations. If you think about people growing more food and building more skills and, you know, food in the pantry and rainwater in the tank and healthy soil and extra seeds, and a lot of the, the emergency preparedness and community preparedness skills and tools, the more we have those things in place, our communities become more resilient and ability to adapt and respond to challenges. Um, you know, from the aspect of being a community organizer, we know how to mobilize people and focus them towards outcomes. You can apply that in a diversity of situations, be it organizing for a tour or a workshop or a big community event, or an emergency situation pops up and, you know, we need to step up um, and support our community. I've heard some incredible stories about from back in the early days of the tree people in uh, southern Sonoma, in southern California actually coming together, and I think it was a flood situation and really being essential in helping mobilize communities to respond appropriately. So both being rooted in permaculture skills and wisdom and those community connections and, and just the the practices of good community organizing, those feel like pretty important ways to to respond in challenging situations. And then also, you know, really just educating and providing awareness and encouraging appropriate responses so we are more prepared before those emergency situations happen. Ah, uh, yes, that's proactive. I love that. Um, tell me, is uh, Transition Towns writing a national a decoration or, or a design uh, plan right now for the country? I don't think uh, our aims are that big. You know, a lot of it is around relocalization is at the core. And so you get into the whole question of even the scale of the country and how viable that is. But we're definitely doing our best to support this rapidly emerging network around the U.S. and around the world to have the best skills and strong relationships and, you know, to, to grow these local initiatives and leaders to best support and connect with others in their communities. Um, you know, I was just at the Transition Network Conference in the U.K. in July, and we were sitting around a table with 35 people from a dozen countries and hearing about everything from transition response in Brazilian favelas to a rapid transition initiative response in New Zealand earthquakes. Um, to the revolt going on in Spain, and, you know, it's not even just in the U.S. There's hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands of groups all over the world who are doing this work, hundreds at least of directly identified transition town um, collaborators, and then beyond that, you got a whole planet full of good people doing good things. 
<clears throat> yes, indeed. Tell me a little bit about our habits and values these days. What do we need to work on? What are the major challenges to implementing this transition? And, you know, the, the cultural values piece is a really big one. Um, you know, I sat in a, a talk or a workshop with David Holmgren, the co-originator of permaculture, about maybe six or seven years ago or something, and then also reading in his writing and really speaking to the, the values and the habits, the thinking we've developed in a world of energy ascent where there seems to be endless water and endless trees and endless soil and endless things for people just to unconsciously harvest versus the values you need in a world of energy descent where there are less resources and it's more on resourcefulness and relationships and, and doing a lot with radically less um, you know, and shifting to a more ecological literate and ecologically designed way of being that's a really big and important shift, you know, because that's, that's just core in our daily practices of, you know, treasuring every drop of water, treasuring every scrap of carbon, treasuring every act and relationship, um, and, you know, obviously working in cycles, right? You know, we have one planet. Where is a way? When you throw something away, there is no away. And so to transition from the most wasteful human generation that has ever existed on this planet to one that lives within rhythm with the function of the seasons and the cycles of life on this planet is, a, is a, a really big thing. And though, you know, you look around at permaculture sites and that, and we have models. We have, you know, people in places using 60, 70, 80 percent less resources that are incredibly lush and productive and fecund um, and full of beneficial products, outcomes, relationships. So there's a, a lot of opportunity, but, you know, really a culture that values nature and values community and values the power of our individual and collective daily actions, I think, is, is an important shift. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to put out an assumption, and that would be that you, over time, have become someone that people come to for counsel and feedback. Um, it certainly is the case with me. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, this fear versus patience uh, sort of, Thing that's going on. How do you counsel people as to um, their their challenges and perhaps their fears about the future? And how, how do you replace that for them? It yeah, it's a it's a really interesting and important question. Um, and I'm always learning from the environment and others around me as well. I mean, one thing is surrounding yourself with good people and good reference points. But at the at the close of the transition conference, I think they were citing. Um, something from Joanna Macy, but this person spoke about uncertainty, and I was thinking in terms of perfect uncertainty, because if we knew things weren't going to work out and we were just screwed, people would give up in, you know, in apathy and anguish. And if we right. knew the future was totally dialed in and taken care of, we'd probably sit back and do nothing. But we don't really know either of those to be true, and so we sit in this place of perfect uncertainty and, you know, the difference in our brain function and our body function, literally how we physically and mentally function, our creativeness, our effectiveness, when we come from gratitude and hope and presence and creativity versus fear and lack and ego crap and those sort of things, it's such a profound difference that you, you physically feel in your body and you function differently and you respond better to challenges and opportunities. We're, we're mentally wired to wonder we are built to explore and engage challenges and uncertainty. Our, our brain chemicals actually work better for us, and we feel better and more alive when we do that. So it's a, it's a really small but critical shift to, in those moments of fear, doubt, emotional triggers, to reclaim that energy. Um, you know, I was sitting on my meditation stool this morning in our backyard, and the Hasui Asian pears are coming on, and the second flush of raspberries, and the Cape gooseberries are hitting, and all these varieties of apples. And it's really lush and vital, and I was really sort of struggling with and feeling, you know, the last week, the huge amount of issues that have come up from kind of all angles, and just watching really incredible people who are also struggling with some big challenges in their lives, and their families, and their businesses, and their organizations and how we impact each other, and just feeling sort of the internal unsettledness with that. And once I started to uh, shift my attention, 
and, and feel that more as an opportunity and an exciting opportunity to engage and explore, you know, my daunting to-do became something a lot different. Um, and so, so they're really small but critical transformations. And some words that often stick with me, I can't remember exactly, but the words of Thich Nhat Hanh, who said something to the effect of, um, the most important thing we can do is to sit skillfully with the present moment to skillfully address our future. You know, and so while we face all these really big challenges, it comes down to small daily actions and small relationships and small acknowledgments and apologies and just being really present with what the moment requires um, and modeling out from there. And as a, as a leadership practice, practicing the personal resilience to consistently make those little transformations in our lives is, is really big and vital. Hmm. Interesting. Tell me um, what it means to be a citizen and what it means to be in the American dream these days. Oh, <laughs> what it means to be a citizen in the American dream. I mean, I certainly wouldn't claim that for, for anybody other than myself, but what it means to me is just recognizing that for the huge, incredible challenges we face and the incredible hurt and loss occurring, this is an amazing time to be alive. And, you know, it's a total gift. And our actions, individually and collectively, have such an incredible impact and we have such an opportunity to, to hit, shift things. This is potentially the most critical decade we've ever faced. Um, and, and so that's incredibly ripe. So... That's, for, you know, for me what it means to be a citizen. And what, what was, again, the second part of that? Well, you know, the American dream has uh, been American. fueling our consumptive patterns and Boy Scout habits and all kinds of stuff. What is, what is the American dream now to you? You know, the American dream to me, or any dream, the, the, is these just incredibly lush, productive, fecund lives and homes and gardens and neighborhoods and cities and towns that use 60, 70, 80% less resources and they're building soil and they're catching and cleaning and sinking water and they're harvesting and cycling nutrients and, and creating these, these, these beautiful, lush, productive landscapes that feed us and family and friends. It's, it's reconnecting to nature and nurturing community and living our potential. That's beautiful. Um, I, I guess I would say we're we're part of a global dream now. So that's exactly <laughs> global, local, right? Yeah. So we had talked uh, a while ago about what's sacred to you. You had some eloquent responses. I wanted to know, as a last question, what um, what sort of stories or songs that uh, you've come across lately in your travels that have struck you as um, harmonious and, and worthy of you know repeating. Stories or songs? Um, you know, a friend, I couldn't pull off the lyrics if you Google it, Diane Patterson, who's a permaculturist, and her, her partner Benjamin Farr is an incredible permaculture teacher. She has a great song on her new album called Drumming the World Awake. Um, that's a really beautiful song to me. been listening to a lot of Amos Lee, just this like super chill, peaceful vibe, really upbeat. Uh, Stories-wise, some of what I mentioned from the Transition Network and just, you know, seeing what people are doing through their struggles and through their challenges, the incredible ways in which people are living and regenerating community and nature um, perpetually blow me away. Getting to work with municipalities in Sonoma County are incredible. The, the staff and board of Transition U.S. and the, the people we're getting to work with are, are, you know, it, it's always just such a gift to one, stay aware of the problems and how we need to adapt and also surround ourselves with and highlight what's working. Um, one more bit of wisdom or quote I heard at, at the transition conference when I was there was, the, the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed yet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So focusing on what's working and let's take it to scale. Whew. Trayton Heckman, thanks so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure as usual. I look forward to sharing your wisdom with uh, 
the World Wide Web. Oh, well, thank you for everything you're doing in our communities, Willie. And, uh, yeah, if people want to find out more, get more engaged, go to Please. dailyacts.org or transitionus.org and rock on. <laughs> okay, enjoy ya. Bye-bye, bye-bye. All right.